man. Thanks for participating. Will you follow me? So this is the beta lab. Can I take a selfie when I'm burying the, the thing? Yeah, of course, man. Hi. since um, it's like saving solution. I'm gonna ask you to put these earbuds in. The first piece uh, is stand still, move as little as possible because we don't want any visual interference and muscle noise in our data. do our ICC research project on the topic of bias in the perception of music, taking inspiration from a study conducted in January 2007, which involved famed violinist Joshua Bell playing six Bach pieces for an hour in a metro station in Washington, D.C. Little did those passing by on their daily commute know that two days earlier the same violinist had sold out a theater in Boston, where seats averaged $100 for people to listen to the exact same pieces he was playing. After an hour of playing, Bell stopped and silence took over. Nobody around him seemed to notice, let alone applaud. In an hour, a violinist who regularly sells out theaters, playing a $3.5 million violin, managed to collect only $32 and get six people to stop and admire his abilities. This got us thinking about how social context can influence our perception of music so significantly. Based on our newfound inspiration, we decided to design our own experiment where we would investigate the effects of social bias on cognition. We began by recruiting 16 participants from the Science Park area, all randomly assigned to our two experimental groups. Depending on their group, they were told that they would be listening to either a positively or negatively reviewed piece of music. Both groups, however, were played the exact same piece for our experiment, we chose Berlioz Symphonie Fantastique, which we were fairly confident nobody knew of. After welcoming our participants to the beta lab, we asked them to sit down, get comfortable, and read a short review of the piece while we applied the EEG to their scalp. They were then given a pair of noise-isolating earphones and asked to put on a blindfold, which would minimize visual interference. After this, they were played the piece while their brain activity was recorded. Each of the participants was later thanked for their participation through effective means of a stickers. After gathering the data, a huge amount of numbers upon numbers, the processing began. Data was converted into a file suitable for treating in the Wake Up program. The data was then adapted into a decision tree, which displayed a significant difference at the T7 electrode located at the left temporal lobe. This area houses the auditory cortex and is associated with high-level auditory processing. The decision tree gave us a 98% correlation, which means that if we were to look at each participant's T7 amplitude, we would be able to classify it correctly 98% of the time. Due to the location of this electrode, this result has a high significance in confirming our hypothesis. It is possible that higher activity in this region can be associated with more critical listening, which would explain why the group that read negative reviews had a higher amplitude at T7. Our experiment provides potentially useful data for fields such as neuromarketing in the music industry, 
as well as better understanding cognitive mechanisms behind the effects of bias. Although our experiment was small-scale and included many uncontrollable variables, we believe we have achieved a significant result for the good of mankind.